Today we are making Schupfnudeln. Schupfnudeln are a kind of a dumpling. This is essentially the southern German version of a gnocchi. The dough is actually the same. So you can make gnocchi and or Schupfnudeln out of the same dough. We need boiled starchy potatoes. These are russets. That's a good type. We need an egg. We need some salt and some flour. That's it. In terms of equipment, you should really have a potato ricer or some kind of grater that allows you to make this as fine as possible without using a mixer or something because a mixer will turn this into a sticky mess and not a nice fluffy consistency. I pre-boiled these potatoes. They're lukewarm. I let them steam out. You want as little moisture in them as possible. You can use potatoes from yesterday. They are just a lot harder to get through a potato ricer, so you might have to grate them. Let's start by just quickly taking the peel off. I'm only making a small portion, so I only need three potatoes. Of course, you can scale this recipe to any size you like. Gnocchis freeze really well, so if you want to go there, make a lot, freeze them, and then you have them at hand whenever you need them. Step number two is you want to run these through the ricer. So you just don't want to have chunks in it. Either way you achieve that without using a mixer or a food processor uh, is fine. Definitely a lot harder than when they're really hot and fresh out of the water. Now you have the potatoes riced, you have an egg. What we are going to do first is add a pinch of salt, maybe two. And then we're going to add the egg. This is fairly moist, so that's where the flour comes into play. You want a ratio of no more than a quarter or 25% of flour. So use as little flour as possible because you don't want this to taste like a noodle. You want this to taste like potatoes. So the more flour you add, the more like a noodle it will be. So I'm just starting with two spoons. Stir and then we'll see where this goes. These hooks are excellent for anything with that kind of consistency, be it a bread dough or something like this. If you want to stir mashed potatoes, works really well for that. Still too moist. So let's do a third spoon of flour. And you know what we should do? Since we're talking German recipe again, we should add a little nutmeg. Nice. So you still want them kind of sticky, but not super sticky. Yeah, this, see, you can form a ball and it just barely sticks to my hand. So this is good. Now you want to work on a nicely floured surface. So what I'm usually doing is I make a little pile of flour and then I can just wipe some in whenever I need some. Now we're going to shape those Schupfnudeln or finger noodles as they're also called because they look like fingers in the end. For that, what you want to do is you roll these out into like an inch thick sausage and then you use a bench scraper or the back of a knife or whatever you want to do and you go for about like inch wide pieces with a little... See, that's already the shape you want. See, if I turn a little, you can see my hand kind of shapes a little bit of, a, of an arch and then you just roll like this and that already gives you the shape. They don't have to be uniform, you know, it's a handmade product. You do this until you run out of dough or until you have enough and you want to make gnocchis with the rest. Let me quickly show you. So if you want to make gnocchis, which is the same dough, so you can make a batch of each, you form a sausage that's a little bit thinner, let's say a good half inch, then you take your bench scraper again and you go like a little bit at a bias, kind of like this. That makes it easier to form these like little balls. Oh, it kind of looks like a football actually. That shape already kind of reminds you of gnocchis and if you have one of these gnocchi little wooden boards, see? And that produces the gnocchi shape. So you would just go ahead, push it over there and there you have these little ridges in your pasta. If you don't have a thing like this, well, a fork will do. You just take it and push it over a fork like this. And of course, it doesn't look exactly the same, but you know, it's still a gnocchi. And there you have gnocchis. So just continue to make your noodles until you're out of dough.
So after a while of pushing noodles around, you end up with a couple plates full of these little noodles. Keep them well dusted with flour. Otherwise, they're going to stick together again and you can start over. Sometimes the dough is a little bit too wet. Then add a little starch. So if you have potato starch, that's the best. But of course, pretty much any starch would do because what keeps these things together is starch. You don't want to add more and more flour because flour gives you the flour taste where simple starch is pretty much tasteless, but provides the glue to put them together. So much for that. All you want to do now is get a pot of water boiling and add a bunch of salt to that. And then we're just going to cook them. If you are going to eat them right away, you need something to go with them. I would recommend sauerkraut. My water is boiling. I'm going to add some salt to this. I want it just boiling, barely. See a little bubbles. That's it. That's good. You just want to get your noodles in there. And I do this individually so that they don't stick together. Okay, don't overcrowd the pot. I'm just carefully pushing them around a little bit to make sure none of them stick to the bottom. See, they're already starting to float up. And that's exactly what we want. We want them to float up. I'm gonna get another plate ready here because once they're all floaty, we just let them simmer for a minute or two and, and we are good to pull them out. Yeah, these are cooked. So I just pull them out. Put them on a plate and now I'm going to do a second batch. Carefully shake them loose. Wait till they float up and you're good to go. Okay, they're all floating up. They're not bendy anymore. So let's pull them out. And this is what they look like. Not much to call home about, but they will be excellent once we pan roast them. We got our Schupfnudeln ready to go. I'm going to quickly make a dish out of this. I've got some sauerkraut and I've got some jowl bacon. Regular bacon will do. I'm, I prefer jowl bacon. A, it's a lot more fatty and B, it's a lot cheaper than regular bacon. But the problem is you don't find that in every store. I only have one store in my neighborhood that actually sells this. And that store caters to a lot of immigrants. So they have stuff other stores don't have, which is probably why they have this. All right, we just roast the bacon. I don't do anything else. You could add a little bit of onion or something if you wanted to, but I think sauerkraut on itself is just fine. I'm going to use clarified butter to roast those guys. Feel free to use regular butter, but clarified butter won't splatter as much as regular butter. Actually, it won't splatter at all because it doesn't have water. I'm thinking like five or six of these will do me for the night. Now let's add the sauerkraut. Put a lid on, let it heat up. And those guys need to be turned. And that's all there is to it. Once you have these Schupfnudeln made, it's rather simple to turn them into a dish. You want them golden brown. So a little bit more than this and they're good. By the time our sauerkraut is hot, these things will be done. Let's plate this up and enjoy. So let's see how they are. Mm. Hot, but nice. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And of course, leave me a comment. I'll see you next time.